What is up, you sexy beasts? Today, we are gonna talk about Ricky Garrard, whether he should, whether he's going to, apologize to Mr. Pat Valner. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you a story about what happened to me, an unfortunate story about what happened to me at the 2020 Waterpalooza. But uh, if you're not aware, Ricky Garrard came second at the CrossFit Games back in 2017. He was then popped for steroids and got disqualified, which meant that he denied Pat Valner the, uh, the experience of standing on the podium in front of the crowd, in front of his family. Um, Pat obviously got the second place um, position, the medal, the, the prize money. He got that after the fact, but he denied him the spotlight at the time. and. Um, Ricky's never really apologized to Pat Vellner. Just two months ago, Chase Ingram from CrossFit HQ had a conversation with Ricky Garrard on the CrossFit Games podcast. It was really the first interview or the first conversation anyone's really had with Ricky uh, since his ban four years ago. And this is one of the topics that they discussed. Have you talked to Pat Vellner? No. No, I haven't. Uh, at the time, it was just, like uh, I didn't feel like my apologies should have been to him. It was more an apology to my family and my close circle of people, the members at the gym and my my coach and my sponsors and all the people that were behind me and my fans and stuff like that. After seeing the documentary, did that change your feelings at all? Kind of what Pat's feelings were about the situation? Yeah, I could see that he would have been upset about it. And if I was in his shoes, then I would have felt the same. But at the time of the, the games, I still believe that like, I knew what I was taking was a risk, as I said, and I didn't think it would come up on a drug test and I didn't put it on the class of steroids. And so I, I think I fairly beat him. That was my, that was my perception. What about now? Yeah, it's, good. it's probably not fair to say that I beat him now because it was, it was wrong, wasn't it? It's illegal what I was doing. Do you have any plans yeah. to maybe reach out to him in the future? As the season starts approaching? Oh, I've thought about that, but it's kind of like, I feel like he'd be like, yeah, whatever, man. That, 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 bus, is, that bus is left like too late. Too late. I don't think that bus leaves for anybody, honestly. Yeah. Put, it, put yourself, switch the positions like you said. Four years later, yeah. someone comes and just says, hey, I screwed up, I'm sorry. Would you appreciate that? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I would. I, I if I'm just going to speak apology. for myself, like, listen, I appreciate this, what we're doing right now. And that's for yeah. this is four years in the making, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So now, since 2017, Pat Valner has become one of the greatest and most well known and most loved CrossFit Games athletes uh, that has ever you know, been on the big stage. He's won many sanctionals, many regionals, many semifinals, whatever you want to call it. He's won a bunch of competitions. You know, he's been on the podium multiple times since then. And he's just a legend. I know Pat personally, I consider him a friend. And he's a very big person. He's a mature person, a very sensible person. And so, you know, I don't think he has really spent any time thinking about this at all. And listening to Ricky in that interview, he obviously feels like he's missed the opportunity to apologize. He's missed the boat and he feels like Pat wouldn't care. Now, both Pat and Ricky are competing at Waterpalooza in just a few short days. And so this will be the first time where they, where they will be at the same event uh, face to face again since 2017 CrossFit Games. And the reason that I hope that Ricky does apologize, does take the time to go and talk to Pat, is more so for Ricky's sake than for Pat's sake. I'm sure it will mean something to Pat, but I think it will be such a weight of Ricky's shoulders. You know, I think we all know that feeling when you've got, not beef with someone, but when you know there's a bit of tension or an expectation between you and someone else, um, it's just awkward and there's tension when you're in the same space. And so I think if Ricky can just, 
you know, man up and go and see Pat and just have the conversation, you know, even if it doesn't mean anything to Pat, I think even just for Ricky's sake, I think it will take away that, just that bit of pressure that he may feel um, to have that conversation. And so um, I think for that reason alone, it'll be worthwhile him stepping up and actually having that conversation. I think it's very obvious that Ricky's come such a long way over the last four years. You know, he's now got such a great mentor and team and Justin Kotler and the, uh, the Underdogs Athletics team. He's got some great people around him. You can tell that he's more at ease with who he is as a person. And so, um, yeah, I think this would be another great step in the right direction for him. And even if the apology doesn't mean anything to Pat, um, you'd hope that it will just reestablish a little bit of respect for Ricky from Pat's side um, if he would man up and say, hey, bro, you know, I know it's been four years, but I just want to let you know I'm sorry. You know, face to face, man to man. What do you guys think? Does he have to apologize? Would it be a good idea? Does Pat care? How do you think it will play out? Uh, they both turn up to the same event. You know, it's a pretty small field. There's no doubt they're going to be crossing paths and being in the same space. Uh, do you think it will be helpful? Do you think it'll be more beneficial for Pat or for Ricky or for both? What are your thoughts on a apology four years later? I think, like Chase said in the interview, it probably can't hurt. Now, on this topic of tension and awkwardness, I wanna tell you a story about what happened to me in 2020 at Waterpalooza. And uh, I look back at it now and it's fine, but at the time it actually really crushed me. I was still very fresh to the content creator space within CrossFit. Um, I only really got my break like late 2019 and this was early 2020. So I was only just meeting all these, you know, all these amazing people, all the brands that, you know, I'd work for and uh, all the, the athletes managers and all the other creators. I was just meeting all these people and building relationships. And there was one particular creator that I really looked up to. And in fact, I was actually working for the same company as this creator at Waterpalooza in 2020. And so I was very excited. And I wanted to get this photo during Waterpalooza of me standing behind this creator and kind of doing this movement, you know, like I'm gonna cut off the king's head. I really looked up to this person as the king of creators in the space. And so uh, it was gonna be like a, a joke that I was gonna post and uh, tag him in it that I was gonna take him down. I'm coming for him, you know, this new creator on the block and I was coming for him. And so I arranged for one of the other creators at Waterpalooza to get this photo of me behind this person doing that kind of, I'm gonna cut your head off kind of uh, movement. And so that first night at Waterpalooza, we're at the main stage, it's the first under the lights event. And this creator that I arranged to take the photo was off to the side. The guy I was looking up to and wanted to get the photo of was in front of me. And so me and the other creator are talking, we're trying to get this photo. And the guy that I look up to, the creator in front of me, he looks back and sees me doing something behind him and just takes it completely the wrong way. Not only uh, does he get offended by what I was doing, but next to him was a female creator um, and he ended up not only taking the message wrong but telling the female creator's husband that I was doing something inappropriate behind her as well. And so it was just this massive misunderstanding that just blew way out of proportion. Now, I didn't realize what happened at the time. I just kind of went along with it, got the, I thought I got the photo, the guy actually never took the photo, um, shot the night and then the next morning at all came to light what actually happened. The female creator that was sitting in front of me, her husband approaches me the next morning and just started going off at me. And uh, you know, this guy is well established in the community and very influential. Um, and he's also a black belt in BJJ. And he's pretty upset with me because you know, this guy's told him that I did something inappropriate behind his wife's back, which I did not. So as he's going off at me, I kind of catch on like what was happening. I kind of catch on to the misunderstanding and I was able to kind of calm him down and explain to him that, you know, that wasn't what I was doing at all. So we parted ways. I actually went back to my hotel, called my wife. I was so upset um, that, you know, these people that I looked up to had misinterpreted something that I did. Anyway, I left Waterpalooza and I thought that was the end of it. But it turns out this creator, they kind of misinterpreted what I was doing behind him not only spoke to you know the husband of, of the female in front of me, but also spoke to the media manager of the company that we worked for and told her the story, and also spoke to a manager of one of the top female athletes in the space. So when I got home to Australia, I thought that was the end of it, but both the media manager and the athletes manager 
brought that same story up with me and so I had to explain to them again that it was just you know such a big misunderstanding and that I actually looked up to this person who was spreading this rumor so when I was thinking about making this video about Ricky and Pat it just brought back memories of my experience at the 2020 Water Palooza and uh, this whole kind of drama that unfolded you know it's nothing now and in the long run the truth always wins out and i've been able to clear my name with the marketing manager and the athletes manager i'm still not sure that the uh, the lady in front of me's husband likes me very much but that's okay and even though i did everything i could to repair the relationship with the creator that misunderstood me the guy that i looked up to or still look up to he's an amazing creator in this space um it's just crazy how something so such a small moment can just turn into such a big drama that just is so unnecessary. And so I guess the point I'm trying to make and the message I was trying to get across to the person that sat in front of me was, if you get offended by someone, just go and speak to them directly and tell them, hey bro, you pissed me off. What was that all about? And if you did that, I would have had the opportunity to explain to him exactly what happened. But instead of confronting me, he just spread all these rumors. And uh, you know, I don't wanna, the reason I'm not saying his name is because I don't wanna um, cause any drama, but it's just such a good lesson to learn. If someone offends you, just go and speak to them directly, face to face, and just sort that thing out there and then. It just avoids so much drama, and um, yeah, I don't like drama. Whew, that's quite good, telling that story. I haven't really told that story to anyone. So if you're watching this video, you're the first one to hear that story. Thank you for helping me get through it, you know? Thank you for being my therapist, in a sense. <laughs> Uh, awesome guys, let me know down in the comments what do you think about Ricky and Pat, should he apologize, shouldn't he, all that jazz, let me know your opinion, it matters, I want to hear it. The backdrop, it's all different again isn't it? If you watch my videos regularly you would know that uh, I often change things around, I just get bored with the same backdrop and so this morning I changed it all around again and I really like this so that'll be it for a little bit. Hi right, guys, have a fantastic day, much love, keep roaring love. Stay sexy, and we'll talk soon. Mwah.